since the GeForce GTX 4060 solidified the concept in 2010. The NVIDIA X60 series has become the benchmark for what we would consider a gaming card. A card for the mainstream, offering solid performance without a premium price tag. And today we're taking a look at how these last 9 generations of NVIDIA cards have defined the desktop gaming experience. In September 2012, the GeForce GTX 660 launched with an initial price of $230, with its main competition back then coming from the AMD Radeon HD 7870 and HD 7950, some of the first cards to debut AMD's Graphics Core Next architecture. The 660, powered by the Kepler architecture, brought several key improvements, including significant improvements to performance per watt, dynamic GPU boost, the first implementation of NVENC hardware accelerated video encoding, and establishing 2GB as the new mainstream video memory size. A year later, in June 2013, NVIDIA followed that up with the GeForce GTX 760, which launched at $250. This Kepler-based refresh was positioned against AMD's Radeon R9 280 and R9 280X, with the 760's major contribution coming from the larger GK104 silicon from the previous generation's higher-end cards, which allowed it to offer similar performance to the older GTX 670 at a significantly lower price. The 760 was also the first card to support SLI multi-GPU technology. The GeForce GTX 960 launched in January of 2015 at a competitive price of $200, competing against AMD's Radeon R9 300 series. This card, based on the Maxwell architecture, delivered a significant architectural leap in performance per watt, despite being built on the same 28 nanometer node as its predecessors. The 960 also introduced VR Direct low latency display technology for the budding VR market along with a new memory compression technology that dramatically increased its effective memory bandwidth. July 2016 saw the release of the GeForce GTX 1060, with the 6GB variant launching at $300. Built on the Pascal architecture and the new 16nm FinFET node, this card matched the performance of the previous generation's enthusiast-grade GTX 980 at a lower power draw of just 120 watts. This generation also extended the prestigious Founders Edition branding to the X60 series for the first time. In March 2019, the GeForce GTX 1060 was introduced at $220, facing competition from AMD's Radeon RX 580 8GB. Utilizing a special version of the Turing architecture that lacked a dedicated ray tracing and tensor core component, the 1660 focused on generational gains in classic raster 3D performance and efficiency over the GTX 1060, while also bringing in a more efficient NVENC streaming component. However, the true successor to the 1060 arrived two months earlier in January 2019 with the GeForce RTX 2060 for $350. This card served as the gateway to the next generation of gaming, powered by the full Turing architecture. It brought two pivotal new features, dedicated RT cores for real-time ray tracing, and tensor cores for AI acceleration, which enabled the breakthrough DLSS upscaling technology. Moving into the modern era, the GeForce RTX 3060 launched in January 2021 at $330, competing with the Radeon RX 6600 XT and RX 6650 XT. Based on the Ampere architecture, the 3060 was a robust entry Featuring a more powerful ray tracing hardware pipeline, the first implementation of PCIe Gen 4, a generous 12 gigabytes of memory, and establishing DLSS 2 as the must-have feature for 1440p gaming. The GeForce RTX 4060 followed in May 2023 with a starting price of $300, competing directly against AMD's Radeon RX 7600. This card, based on the Ada Lovelace architecture, introduced the highly debated feature of DLSS 3 frame generation, an AI technique that allows the GPU to draw entirely new frames to effectively double frame rates. Crucially though, the card boasted a tiny board power of just 115 watts, representing significant energy efficiency gains. And finally, the newest card in the market is the GeForce RTX 5060, launched in May 2025 at $300 and going up against the powerful Radeon RX 9060 XT. 
running on the Blackwell architecture, it's on the same 5 nanometer node as its predecessor, but introduced a faster GDDR7 memory, along with support for the newer PCIe 5.0 standard. The star feature, though, is support for DLSS4 multi-frame generation, which leverages AI to generate up to three frames following every conventionally rendered one, offering the potential for quadruple frame rates in supported titles. Now that we know the history, though, let's see how each of these cards compares in terms of raw performance. And let's start our testing with Battlefield 1, which was released in 2016. And this is a good time to point out that we can't test the latest and greatest games on these cards since some of these are 13 years old and won't have the VRAM or DirectX support for something like Battlefield 6. So back to Battlefield 1, the GTX 660 is doing a pretty respectable job, especially considering this game is four years newer than the card and we are running at ultra quality settings. The GTX 760 does just a bit better at 36 FPS, with the GTX 960 being a noticeable step up at 48 FPS. The GTX 1060 though does deliver a generational leap at 83 FPS, being over 70% faster than the last generation. Swapping in the GTX 1660 does give us a nice boost in performance up to 102 FPS, but the increase in performance with the RTX 2060 is much bigger, being over 60% faster than the 1060. The RTX 3060 does give us a respectable 20% bump in performance, the RTX 4060 giving us an additional 15% in performance, with the RTX 5060 topping the charts at 248 FPS, 30% faster than the RTX 4060. All the other games we tested did follow a similar pattern, so we'll speed through the rest of the tests and only call out the highlights. Counter-Strike 2 was released in 2023, and for how new it is, performs pretty well on older hardware. It still runs on cards that are 10 years older than it, and could probably be a pretty good experience if you tune down the settings. But the newer cards are a little bit closer together as we run into CPU bottlenecks. It's vintage game testing, so we need to include a Crisis game, and in this case Crisis 3 from 2013. This game was pretty stressful on hardware, especially back in the day, with the GTX 760 only delivering around 30 FPS, despite being released the same year. Even with a modern GPU though, it's still not a cakewalk, with the RTX 5060 able to deliver 120 FPS, which is pretty low for a 12-year-old game. Moving on to something more recent is Cyberpunk 2077. This game from 2020 is pretty stressful on older hardware, especially at ultra quality settings, with the GTX 660 delivering 9 FPS, though once you get up to the RTX 2060, we are at a pretty good 68 FPS. Doom 2016 is known for being very well optimized, and indeed it does run into the frame rate cap on four of our cards. The GTX 960 is at 68 FPS, with the GTX 660 inexplicably producing a few more frames than the GTX 760. Grand Theft Auto V from 2015, yes, 10 years ago, with the GTX 660 coming in one frame shy of 60 FPS, with most modern cards hitting the internal limit of 188 FPS. Hogwarts Legacy from 2023 is the newest game on our test and built on Unreal Engine 4 does run on older GPUs, though the GTX 660 and 760 are at 5 FPS, with the RTX 4060 being the benchmark for 60 FPS. With just 2GB of VRAM though on the older cards, not every modern game will run, at least without reducing settings down to their lowest, as seen with this example of Red Dead Redemption 2 from 2019. Despite the newer cards delivering similar performance to Hogwarts Legacy, the older three cards will crash the game unless you greatly reduce the settings. Still, older games that are still popular today, such as The Witcher 3 from 2015, continue to work on all hardware, though if your GPU is only a three-digit number, you'll need to lower down the settings to get playable frame rates. Comparing the overall performance between all of these cards just showcases how much we've come in nine generations, with the RTX 5060 being roughly 800% faster than the GTX 660, it does highlight NVIDIA's continued Genova Gen performance for eight straight generations. 
That performance, though, did not come evenly, with the GTX 1060 offering monumental gen-over-gen -gen performance, and if you exclude the GTX 1660, the same could be said about the RTX 2060. With the RTX 5060 being the biggest jump gen-over-gen -gen in the last three generations, but modest by comparison. Looking at the launch MSRPs adjusted for inflation does highlight that the GTX 1060 and RTX 2060 were the most expensive cards of the bunch at the time, so it kind of makes sense that they would offer the biggest performance advantage gen over gen. When looking at the performance per dollar though adjusted for inflation, that's when the real story comes out. The GTX 1060 was not really a performance revelation in terms of its price, but the GTX 1660 was. In the last two generations of cards have offered similar performance per dollar jumps, though as we saw in the raw numbers, this is less to do with pure performance and all to do with value, which is really what the X60 line is all about. And really, that value is a lot better than it used to be, even more so than these charts suggest, all thanks to DLSS. Before the release of the RTX 2060, if you needed more performance in your gaming, you needed to either play at a lower resolution or lower down the settings. Battlefield 1 on a GTX 960 achieved 48 FPS at 1080p, but if you did want to play at 60 FPS, you would need to reduce the settings from maximum to medium. And while this might not be a massive downgrade, it does reduce far away environmental detail. Games like Crisis, though, were a different story, since at maximum you only got 29 FPS, but going down to the lowest quality settings, you'd only get 49 FPS. So you would still need to reduce your resolution and play the game on low. With the cards that support DLSS, you also have the option of using upscaling. Borderlands 4 is basically unplayable on an RTX 5060 at 1080p ultra quality settings, and even going down to the medium preset only boosts you from 24 FPS to 55 FPS. But with DLSS quality, you can enable the high preset and still achieve 60 FPS. And for games that run very well on this card, such as Doom The Dark Ages, which hits 68 FPS on the maximum quality setting, you can boost that to 97 FPS by enabling DLSS quality, increasing your performance without reducing the in-game environment. And that's not even mentioning the newer card's ability to smooth out your experience with frame generation. How we reach smooth gameplay has fundamentally changed. The biggest shift for the X60 line came with the introduction of AI-powered features like DLSS upscaling and frame generation, which these features allow gamers to run at higher settings using ray tracing and still achieving fluid frame rates without having to lower down the settings. It not only improves performance, but also cuts down on VRAM usage, significantly extending the lifespan of older GPUs, and has become one of the main reasons why you would consider the RTX 5060 over its competition. While that card has continued the pattern of gradual and practical improvements, its most talked about limitation is its 8GB of VRAM, which can feel tight in modern titles without DLSS. We'll have to see how this changes with the Super lineup expected to come out in 2026. But for now, we'll have to wait to see what NVIDIA announces and what their plans are to push the X60 lineup.